What's up drift nerds? Today we're going to be working on making tires last longer and the basic premise for like why tires degrade so quickly during drifting is just from all of the heat and the friction which is why when you drift in the rain there's not a ton of friction, they don't generate a lot of heat, they don't degrade so quickly so we're going to make our own rain in the car. If you've already seen the video where Jeff does this exactly where I stole the idea from. He helped me put all the kit together and I'm going to show you guys how easy it is and everyone should have a tire sprayer system set up in the drift cars because it makes your tires last so much longer. So let's jump in. I'm going to show you how easy it is. It all starts with this. So this is just some generic windshield washer fluid reservoir. I think these are for big rig trucks. Anyway, you get them from this uh, plastics corporation for uh, prices on the screen. I think it's less than 30 bucks. This is the five quart version. They were all sold out of the six quart version when I was building this kit. And I should have just waited and got the six quart because there is enough room for it in my car. This thing has the pump built into it, but before you go crazy in mounting this thing, make sure you run a 12 volt switched power with a little spade on the end to plug into there. Uh, a lot of people use the rear defroster. That's what Jeff did anyway. Um, and I don't really have wiring for that because this thing was a stripped out car when I got it. So I ran a line to switch up front and yeah, just make sure you send switch power back here so you can actually turn the pump on and off. You don't want it to be like an auto on kind of thing because it will just run out real quick. So I have these mounty brackets all lined up. Luckily my car kind of came with some weird like threaded holes in the back. So I mounted to that, um, but I'm gonna put up a picture. This is Jeff's setup. He used like, I think, angle iron bracket or angle aluminum. Anyway, and then just kind of like riveted to the back of his car. Um, I had to puff mine out a little bit. Like you see, I built these kind of spacer brackets in here uh, just so I could get to the filler neck while it's in the car. If I didn't do that, the filler neck would be buried underneath this lip and I couldn't actually put water in the car. These brackets were just kind of things I had laying around. Uh, use your creativity, I would say. Now just hook in that switched power and then make sure you ground the other side, like, you know, basic electrical stuff. And bam, your pump has power. Oh, I almost forgot. Make sure you mount this in the middle of the car. Uh, that way the lines that go to the tires are equal length, like with a pretty equal run. Uh, the pump's pretty strong, so I'm sure if you want you can mount it to a different side, but you really got to make sure that the lines are the same length so you get equal water pressure at both sides. That's a thing. For these lines, I of course have already run them and it's going to be a huge hassle to take them out, so I'm just going to show you what I did. Uh, you have this T fitting, right, that goes from the one pump line and then tees off into the two lines. Really simple, it's just you run a hose through the car. Uh, the next part's where it gets fun and tricky. Also, make sure you zip tie every connection because there's a ton of water pressure in this system and these things popped off on me a few times when I was testing it. So zip tie the crap out of everything. So this is where the hose meets the body. You're obviously gonna have to drill a hole or in my case, too many. Uh, make sure you measure where the center of your tire is before you drill the hole. Uh, I did this with my wheels off like an idiot, so the first hole I drilled just poured all the water on like the back quarter inch of tire. Uh, so I then had to drill a couple more to get it right, and then I also have to lean the nozzle down like this in order to get it to spray the whole tire once the tire's up in there. Uh, to do that I just kind of use the zip tie to hold the nozzle like crooked. Uh, yeah, do a better job with yours. So making the nozzles is super easy, but it can be the expensive part if you're an idiot like me. I went to the wrong hardware store, and you want quarter inch outside diameter copper tubing. The place I went only sold it in 25 foot spools, so I have 25 feet of it. I obviously don't need that much. You make a few nozzles, because if a tire explodes, it'll rip the nozzle out, or sometimes it'll fall out. Uh, but I don't think I need 25 feet worth of nozzles. So if you're in New Orleans and you need some copper tubing for your nozzles, hit me up, I got a ton. Uh, anyway, you need a little uh, cutter tool, the pipe cutter thing to actually cut these things. If you don't have one of these, you can use a hacksaw, which is what I did because I forgot I had this. Um, so the ones on the car are made with a hacksaw, but I'll show you the right way to do it. You need pliers to pinch the end. 
These ones might suck because they kind of they pinch at a V, so it might make the nozzle uneven. I think you, what you should do is get uh, ones that clamp flat, like some channel locks or something, or a vise would be great. Uh, but I don't have that. And then you also need a razor blade as a gapper tool. So here's how you do it. Now you have this little length of stuff. Obviously you need one end to be a nozzle. So you just grab your pliers and start pinching it down. And before you get too far, take the razor blade in there. It's just thick enough to be like a really good gapper tool. So you just kind of pinch it down on that. And then bam, you got a little gap. It's kind of big. I might make that a little smaller. Um, and these are probably bad pliers to do it with because you can see it's kind of uneven. But still, you just kind of want like a little slit in there to shoot the water out nice and flat and big. So make sure you drill the holes out to just be the same size or slightly larger than the tubing is. So it kind of forces up in there. And then since you flared that end, it's not going to be able to fit through the hole. So that kind of traps it in when you sandwich it on the other side with the tube. So there you go. It's all put together. And then for me, I zip tie it down like this just to kind of keep it at that angle to shoot it out to hit the whole tire. I obviously haven't tested this yet because my car still isn't finished, but I shot a quick little video where Jeff talks about his setup, and I'll put a link to that in the end card. But uh, Jeff Perkins gets all the credit for this. He sent me all the links and helped me build the kit, and he was the first one I've seen to do this. I'm sure other people have done it, but he opened my eyes, so thanks, Jeff. Uh, I'll put a link to all of the stuff in the description so you guys can just click and build your own kit. And yeah. If you did build this, let me know what you did differently. I'm always down to improve what I have. And make sure you share this video with a friend. It might not save their life, but it can save them some tire life. A Later, guys.